Welcome to the head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat lab. We also refer to this as H-E-E-N-T, so head, eyes, ears, nose, throat. For this lab, please pull out your lab manual and you're going to find that it's four different chapters that the eyes, um, that the head and neck, the eyes, the ears, the, the nose, mouth, and throat are all separate. So you're going to have four different chapters to look at. And go ahead in your course packet and pull out the page that says H-E-E-N-T, Skills, Practice, and Write-Up Outline. Um, so that you'll need that too as you're practicing. What I'm going to do is demonstrate the exam on a client, and then I'm going to at the end tell you the um, uh, exactly what you'll have to do for the CCE for, for this particular lab. So we're going to get started. Um, also, in each of the sections of the lab, what you'll notice are health history questions. For instance, under the eyes, it talks about any difficulty seeing or, or blur, eyes blurring or any eye pain. So each of the four chapters will have some history questions. So be sure that you go to those and ask your client. But we're going to try to pull it all together and then I'll tell you what's in the CCE. So let's get started. Here's the skill of head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat with a patient. Hello. Hi, I'm Carolyn Merriman. I'm your nurse today. Um, can you please tell me your full name? Yes, Lita Jones. Hi, Ms. Jones. Um, I need to check your, your armband. Okay. Um, okay, Lita Jones, can you please tell me your birth date? It is 12-28-1957. I washed my hands right before I came in the room. Um, thank you so much. Can I call you uh, Lita? Would that be okay? That'd be fine. Okay, well today what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your head your eyes, your ears, your nose, and your throat. So to do, this, um, to do this exam, I'm going to need inspection. I'm also going to need a ophthalmoscope and an otoscope. And um, so students, you can get that either on the wall and turn on the scope, or you might have to have something like I do, which is a portable one that you have to put together. And in some of the clinics, we have to put them together. So I will show you how to do that in a few minutes. All right, so what I'm looking right now is just the general appearance of your head and neck. And the word that I'm looking for is symmetry. Your head is is straight on your um, uh, on the axis. It doesn't look like there's any drooping of anything. Your your face doesn't look like it's drooping. So things like that might be a sign of a stroke. Um, so I'm looking to see that to make sure that looks good. Your neck looks fine. Um, I'm just going to inspect your neck. And in another exam, we're going to be doing a cardiac ex uh, cardiac assessment, and then we'll be doing some neck vessels too. I don't see any bulging. Um, neck vessels at this point, or any excessive pal, um, palpation or pulsations. Um, what I am going to do is, like I said, just looking at the symmetry, and I'm also going to go ahead and just press on her sinuses. So her palpations next, I've inspected. I'm going to palpate above her eyebrows. Those are called the frontal sinuses, and I'm going to palpate the maxillary sinuses, which are her cheekbones. Did you feel any tenderness when I touched that? No. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is also um, palpate your lymph nodes. So I'm going to be using two fingers, flat part of two fingers, and I'm going to be going through the different groups. So the preauricular is are the group right here um, b before or in front of the ear. Those are the preauricular. Posterior auricular are behind the ear. And so I'm going to be doing that on both sides, so preauricular and posterior auricular. Then what I'm going to be doing are the tonsillar. Um, some people call those the jugular. And then I'm going to be doing anterior cervical, and I kind of go up and down. And then posterior cervical are behind the sternocleidomastoid again, up and down. Then I'm going to be doing um, underneath the jaw. There's also one here called the submental, which I use one finger for. And then behind her neck is the and behind the neck is an occipital. There's a group called the occipital. You can use two hands or one, but it's right at the base of the neck. So always go through and do all those chains. And then the last one I want to do is the um, supraclavicular, and it's um, it's where you put your. There's a little space above the clavicle that's an indentation. So those are the supraclavicular. I didn't feel any lymph nodes, which is normal. So it would be no lymphadenopathy is how I would have. Um, how I would have charted that. So now I've looked at her head and I've palpated her sinuses and I've palpated for her lymph nodes. Um, what I want to also do is just in general look and see where her trachea is. You have a, a sternal notch here above 
um, right at the, as you go down from her chin all the way down, there's a, a sternal notch. And so what I'm gonna do is just put my finger and my forefinger and just feel for her trachea. Her trachea is right there and it's right in the center. That, and if it were off-centered, what would be called tracheal deviation. I also want to check for her trachea, I'm mean, not her trachea, but her, um, her thyroid gland. So I'm just going to push one thyroid one way on one side and then just ask her to swallow. And then go the other way, press the other way and ask her to swallow. And actually, I want to just tell you all this is a higher level of skill, so you don't have to do this skill. I just want you to be aware that that's how I would have checked for her thyroid gland. If I were in an FNP role, a family nurse practitioner role, I would want to be able to assess it. But if you visibly saw someone's enlarged thyroid, you would want to note that. That would be a goiter or something really large. You'd be able to tell that. All right, now, um, Lita, what I'd like to do is I would like to look in your eyes and your ears and your mouth, okay? So to do this, students, again, you can take an ophthalmoscope off the wall, but I have to put mine together. So I use this base, and what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and, and use the ophthalmoscope head, ophthalmoscope head, and you actually have to kind of screw it on. If this, in my clinic in the, in the pediatrics, you actually have to do, you know, put together this stuff. And then there's a little red button that, that turns a cam around and that should just turn that light right on. Okay, excellent. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing is looking through, what I'm gonna be doing is looking through this light and just looking at a red reflex. So have your patient look, look directly at my nose. And what I wanna do is just look in your eyes through the ophthalmoscope and when I press it on her pupil, I see a red reflex. Thank you very much. Now I'm gonna look in the other one for a red reflex. Excellent. The red reflex means the reflection of the light on the back of her retina, and it's clear. It is a red reflex. If it were white, she might have a cataract. In order to do the next um, pupil test, I'm gonna actually put on the otoscope light because it's a little bit bigger, I think. And what I'm going to do now is check for uh, that her pupils are equal, round, reactive to light, and then I'll show you accommodation. All right, so again, looking straight at me, I'm, I always put my hand up by the nose, but I'm gonna bring the light from the side, and I'm shining the light into this side of the pupils. I'm watching for pupil constriction, and then I'm coming on this side and doing the same thing. All right, so what I found, first of all, when I look at her pupils, I found that her pupils are equal in size and that they're round. And then I took the light and found that they were reactive to light, both directly where I shone the light on one side and consensually on the other side. Because when you shine a light in one side and you see constriction, constriction will happen on the other side too. So equal, round, reactive to light. Now the last thing I need to do is also the accommodation. So Ms. Lita, what I'd like you to do is look off in the distance Look far away. When I tell you, I want you to look at my finger about three inches in front of your face. Are you looking far away? Yes. Okay. So now would you look at my finger? Excellent. So what I found that happened is when she looked far away, I was watching her pupils and her pupils dilated because it takes more light for her pupils to see things far away. And as soon as I put my finger in front of her and she looked close, her pupils constricted. It doesn't take as much light. So they constricted and they converged and that is accommodation. So I can record then that her pupils were equal, round, reactive to light and don't forget the accommodation. That's called PERLA. All right, now what I'd like to do is, um, I also noticed just basically that, just looking at the external, that she has eyelashes, that her sclera is white. Can you just put your, um, pull your eyelids down? Her conjunctiva, which is the inside um, tissue, mucous membranes, they look pink, they don't look red or infected, there's no drainage in the eyes. So those are some other things that you would look for. All right, we're done with our eye assessment. Now I would like to do an ear assessment. So I'm gonna use the otoscope, and you can also use your pen lights when you're doing the pupillary um, light reflex. So I've got my scope. This is the otoscope. So I went, th the ophthalmoscope was needed for the red reflex. Now I'm using the otoscope. I put on a speculum, which are these little black covers, because you don't wanna put the scope in a person's ear without a speculum. What I need to do now is just check your ears, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is just look at your ear. Can I tuck your hair back here? Mm -hmm. I'm looking to see what the position of the ear is to see if there's any obvious lesions or anything on the external part of the ear. 
I'm going to touch your ear a little bit. Is there any pain with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't, there's no pain. Sometimes if you have pain, that means the person might have swimmer's ear or something. What I'm going to do is get on the other side of her, and I'm going to look in her ear. And since she's an adult, I'm going to pull her ear, her ear, her external ear, back and up. Okay, I hold my otoscope that I'm turning on like this so I can study myself, but you all can, you might some see some people practice like that. So I'm going up and in. I'm going to check your ear. Gently put it in. Once you get it in, point it towards her nose, and you're looking for the tympanic membrane, which is called the TM, and what you're going to see is pearly gray. You also might see a light reflex. The light reflex is in the 5 o'clock. This is her right ear, so it's in the 5 o'clock spot, and it's like a cone of light, and it should be very clear. Then I would go and inspect and look at her left ear. Can you turn this way just a hair for me, please? So the left ear, I don't see any visible problems, no swelling, nothing on her external ear. I'm going to pull it a little bit. Is there any pain when I do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to pull it up and back. I'm going to look. Again, I see a tympanic membrane. This is the left ear, so the cone of light is at the 7 o'clock spot. All right, well, I'm done with the ear exam. And now what I would like to do is um, check your nose. Make sure your nose is okay. So you can actually, um, we don't put a speculum inside the nose, but first thing I'm gonna do is just inspect it. It looks like the nose is straight on the face. It doesn't look like there's any deformities. Can you please um, occlude one side and sniff? Okay, the other side please. That's a patency test. Sometimes you can do smell tests too, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to look in her nose with my light, but I'm not going to put a speculum in it. Okay, I see that her nose is a little bit red. Maybe she's had some allergies. Have you had any allergies or a cold? Okay. I see that the mucous membrane is a little bit red. I don't see any deviated uh, septum in there. Um, I'm going to wash my hands again because I touched her nose. Okay. And now what I'd like to do, the last part of this is the, the throat. And so... What I would like you to do, please, is open your mouth, and I'm going to not need a tongue blade because she's going to say, ah. Uh. I'm going to be looking at the top, looking at the cheeks. Can you raise your tongue? Good. Can you put your bottom lip down? I'm also looking at her condition of her teeth. Thank you. Her lips. I'm looking at the condition of her teeth. I'm looking at the very back to see that the uvula rose when she said ah evenly. I'm looking to see if she has any redness or drainage at the back of her throat. If you couldn't see, you could use a tongue blade, but if you use a tongue blade, be sure you use it on the side of the tongue, not the middle because it can cause a gag reflex. All right. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I need to talk with you about. Um, all right, so you have seen me do a complete head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat exam. What I would like to tell you are the pieces that, that you will be doing for your uh, head to toe final performance exam. You're not gonna do every single thing that we did, but the pieces that you will do would be, you're going to have the person look at you and look at my nose. You're going to do pupils are equal, round, and reactive to light. Please look at, um, to the distance. Now look at my finger and accommodation. You're also going to put, that's the only test you're gonna do for the eyes. The other thing you're gonna do is put your otoscope together and you're going to um, look in the ears on both sides and you're going to in, and see that the um, tympanic membrane was gray with, with a, a, a positive light reflex bilaterally. Um, coming back to the eyes, I told you the only thing you'd have to do was the pupillary light. You will also look for the red reflex. So to do the red reflex, you do need the ophthalmoscope. You'll need to turn it on, and then you'll be looking through the ophthalmoscope at her pupil, and you will look for a red reflex on each side. Lastly, and again, you're going to have something in lab that has already together. You're going to have the person open their mouth. Say ah, ah, raise their tongue, pull their lower lip down, and that is your oral mucosa check. So for the CCE or the final performance exam, you'll be doing pupillary light reflex, which is the perla. You'll be doing ears and ear check otoscopically. 
Um, you'll check the red reflex in the eyes and then the, you'll do the mouth exam. So those are the pieces that you'll be doing and that's what's on your course manual packet to do right up and practice this week in lab. Well this concludes our head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat exam. Is there anything I can do for you now Miss Lita? Okay I'm gonna go wash my hands. Thank you very much.